There is nothing you cannot be. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot have. For thousands of years, people have disbelieved the promises of God for the most extraordinary reason. They were too good to be true. So you have chosen a lesser promise, a lesser love. For the highest promise of God proceeds from the highest love. Yet you cannot conceive of a perfect love, and so a perfect promise is also inconceivable, as is a perfect person. Therefore, you cannot believe even in yourself. Failing to believe in any of this means failure to believe in God, for belief in God produces belief in God's greatest gifts, unconditional love, and God's greatest promise, unlimited potential. You may select the persons, places, and events, the conditions and the circumstances, the challenges and the obstacles, the opportunities and the options with which to create your experience. You may select the colors for your palette, the tools for your chest, the machinery for your shop. What you create with this is your business. And that is the business of life. Your potential is unlimited in all that you've chosen to do. Do not assume that a soul which has incarnated in a body, which you call limited, has not reached its full potential. For you do not know what the soul is trying to do. You do not understand its agenda. You are unclear to its intent. Therefore, bless every person and bless every condition and give thanks. Thus you affirm the perfection of God's creation and you show your faith in it. For nothing happens by accident in God's world, for there is no such thing as coincidence. Nor is the world a battlefield. Nor is the world buffeted by random choice or something you call fate. If a snowflake is utterly perfect in its design, do you not think that the same could be said about something as magnificent as your life? There is perfection in the process, and all life arises out of choice. It is not appropriate to interfere with choice, nor to question it. It is particularly inappropriate to condemn it. What is appropriate is to observe it, and then to do whatever might be done to assist the soul in seeking and making a higher choice. Be watchful therefore, of the choices of others, but not judgmental. Know that their choice is perfect for them in this moment and that. Yet stand ready to assist them should the moment come when they seek a newer choice, a different choice, a higher choice. Move into communion with the souls of others and their purpose, their intention, will be clear to you. Remember this sacred law of the universe. Allow each soul to walk its path. Rightness or wrongness is not an intrinsic condition. It is a subjective judgment in a personal value system. By your subjective judgments, do you create yourself? By your personal values to determine and to demonstrate who you are, the world exists exactly as it is so that you may have the opportunity to make these judgments. If the world existed in per perfect condition, your life process of self-creation would be terminated. It would end. We would be through creating where there nothing more to create. We have a vested interest in keeping this game going. Much as we all say we would like to solve all the problems, we dare not, or there will be nothing left for us to do. So if I say to you, ye are gods, where does that leave religion? If I say to you, you are healed, where does that leave science and medicine? 
If I say to you, you shall live in peace, where does that leave the peacemakers? If I say to you, the world is fixed, where does that leave the world? What of plumbers? The world exists the way it exists, just as every snowflake exists the way it exists, quite by design. You have created it that way, just as you have created your life exactly as it is. And I want what you want. The day you really want to end hunger, there will be no more hunger. I have given you all the resources with which to do that. You have all the tools with which to make that choice. You have not made it. Not because you cannot make it. The world could end hunger tomorrow. You choose to not make it. Nothing is more gentle than nature. And nothing, nothing has been more cruel to nature than man. Yet you step aside from all involvement in this. You deny all responsibility. It is not your fault, you say, and in this you are right. It is not a question of fault. It is a matter of choice. I will do nothing for you that you will not do for yourself. That is the law and the prophets. The world is in the condition it is because of you and the choice you have made or failed to make. Not to decide it is to decide. The earth is in the shape it's in because of you and the choices you have made or failed to make. Your own life is the way it is because of you and the choices you have made or failed to make. So feed your hungry. Give dignity to your poor. Grant opportunity to your less fortunate. End the prejudice which keeps the masses huddled and angry with little promise of a better tomorrow. Put away your pointless taboos and restrictions upon sexual energy. Rather, help others to truly understand its wonder and to channel it properly. Remember, you have come here to work out an individual plan for your own salvation. Yet salvation does not mean saving yourself from the snares of the devil. There is no such thing as the devil, and hell does not exist. You are saving yourself from the oblivion of non-realization. You cannot lose in this battle. You cannot fail. Thus, it is not a battle at all, but a process. Yet if you do not know this, you will see it as a constant struggle. It is in not struggling that the process proceeds. It is in surrendering that the victory is won. I tell you this, there is no coincidence and nothing happens by accident. Each event and adventure is called to yourself by yourself in order that you might create and experience who you really are. All true masters know this. That is why mystic masters remain unperturbed in the face of the worst experiences of life as you would define them. Jesus Christ was not perturbed by the crucifixion, but expected it. He could have walked away, but he did not. He could have stopped the process at any point. He had that power, yet he did not. He allowed himself to be crucified in order that he might stand as man's eternal salvation. Look, he said, at what I can do. Look at what is true. And know that these things and more shall you also do. For have I not said, ye are gods? Yet you do not believe. If you cannot then believe in yourself, believe in me. Such was Jesus' compassion that he begged for a way and created it to so impact the world that all might come to heaven, which is self-realization. 
if in no other way through him. For he defeated misery and death, and so might you. The grandest teaching of Christ was not that you shall have the everlasting life, but that you do. Not that you shall have brotherhood in God, but that you do. Not that you shall have whatever your request, but that you already do. All that is required is to know this. For you are the creator of your reality. And life can show up in no other way for you than that in which you think it will. You think it into being. 